Spectrum Hawaii is funded in part by grants from the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts and from the people of Chevron, celebrating a century of service to Hawaii. Okay, Doug, are you set? Clear. Stacy. Clear. Robert. Clear. Christopher Keegan. Clear. A firm. Walter, are you ready? Ready. Are you ready? The downtown area and Chinatown have kind of <clears throat> integrated, I think, a little bit more than they were, and I think that'll continue to happen. It's, it's turning a place that it doesn't have to be reinvented. I mean, it's got a sense of place, a sense of history. Hawaii and Honolulu in particular have grown over the past 30 years to an extent where a lot of what people consider to be Hawaiian has vanished. Chinatown still portrays much of that bohemian atmosphere that artists like. It has some ethnic shops, foods, sites that can't be found anywhere else. And Chinatowns across the country are undergoing resurgence. And it's not unusual then that um, Honolulu's Chinatown should be undergoing such a transformation. Walter came up with this idea. I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Well, it was clear that we were tearing down an old building. You know, maybe we could give something back that would be lasting and permanent in this community. And that was uh, creating a, a, uh, a, a highly accessible, highly visible contemporary museum. To me, it was uh, extremely important, um, and, and one reason for sure was the taking down of the Damon Building. I felt that while that was a very difficult decision, and there was a lot of emotion involved, that having made that decision and done that, that I had a responsibility to the community to give back something that I felt would, in a long, long-term way, replace uh, what we had taken away, and that's part of the genesis of the uh, museum. We're at the Merchant uh, Bishop Street corner of First Hawaiian Center, and on the right here is the uh, Contemporary Museum. Probably the most impressive feature of that museum will be uh, an art glass wall that rises from this 60-ton beam up to uh, the top of the um, third floor of the building. And uh, this will give us a uh, different perspective of the Contemporary Museum. Okay, here we are. We're uh, Right now we're up on the fourth floor deck looking down into the uh, Contemporary Museum, the Bishop Street side of it. And down here you can see the curved beam that will support the art glass wall that we were looking at from below. And the art glass wall will rise up from that beam to about the level that we're at. And then uh, coming across from the top of it will be a skylight that will return to the deck over here. The, the Contemporary Museum is, is a mixture of commerce and art. Nothing, nothing looks functional. Everything has an artistic side to it because, uh, again, this is intended to be an art museum. And, and so the architects have gone to great lengths to, to make sure that everything has an artistic bent to it. Its uh, dimensions are unique in terms of high vaulted ceilings. Uh, the, Spaces that are available for exhibit are going to be the largest uh, exhibit spaces in the state. Um, it's punctuated by uh, something that both uh, uh, distinguishes the museum facility itself internally, but also for the entire building externally in terms of a, uh, uh, what we call an art glass wall uh, that was designed by Jamie Carpenter. 
the art glass wall really furthers our interest as a studio in doing uh, functional elements of a building. Uh, and its function is not just in terms of its environmental controls, but as a uh, sort of a sculptural element that is presented to the public and contributes to the, sort of the urban site of the building. Uh, I have to say that the owner, the building owner, which is the bank, and also the uh, developer, which is the Myers Corporation, uh, really placed a great deal of support and commitment to see this project through uh, with the hopes that this becomes one of the most significant uh, public art elements in downtown Honolulu. The first Hawaiian bank uh, art glass wall really has a, uh, a characteristic to it that is shared with some of our independent sculptures that we actually produce. I mean, oftentimes when we produce an independent sculpture, it's really about exploring a, uh, a phenomenon of light or sort of a very clear structural idea. Uh, in the curtain wall, it's, it's, it's much more intriguing because you're not only providing a functional layer, meaning sort of the weather boundary of the building facade, but, but trying to develop some depth or thickness to that wall through glass structure, you really get almost a sculptural uh, sort of unlocking of light within the wall itself. We knew right from the start that we were to incorporate uh, design for the Contemporary Art Museum into the banking hall. So that gave us some challenges. How do we do that? Uh, make it consistent with the building design from the exterior and yet make something special uh, to highlight the fact that uh, some of that space would be used for the Contemporary Art Museum. And one of the things that evolved out of that was the design of the uh, art glass wall. We just recently uh, put together a mock-up in California uh, with all these different pieces together doing a structural test to make sure it's not going to leak when it's uh, uh, installed and also for uh, visual reasons to make sure that everything that we uh, liked on paper was uh, in, in reality uh, uh, met our expectations. I had no idea, I've never done a museum and I had no idea what I was in store for in working with uh, our architects. I don't think Walter did either. I mean, uh, clearly, uh, there's, a, there's a guy that's uh, very active in his community and, and, and involved in a lot of things, but uh, building museums every day is not uh, a part of the routine. The niche that we will serve will be um, local artists, and I just felt that they needed their own place to exhibit art. Um, and I define local artists as being someone born and raised here who uh, makes art here, or produces art here, or um, is born and raised here and produces art elsewhere, or someone from elsewhere who has moved to Hawaii and creates their art here. So that is my loose definition of, of, of local art. This is really going to be quite a different thing. It's really going to be a location, a pure location for the museum, downtown, devoted primarily to local art and local artists. I think what a lot of people in Hawaii aren't necessarily aware of is the really the diversity of, of art that's being done here. There really is this incredible range of things that are happening here. And unfortunately, the general public doesn't have an opportunity to become aware of them, I think, uh, on a regular basis, simply because there aren't venues for these artists to um, show and present their work. Artists are starving. Uh, they work hard. Many times are not recognized even in their own lifetimes. And they need, they need help from the, the business community and the community as a whole. So my idea was to create a, a place for them to exhibit, to have shows, to sell the art, and then to give 100 cents on the dollar to the artists. And that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to endow the museum, and all the funds from the sale of the arts will go directly to the artists with nobody in between. A museum show in the life of a working artist um, validates one's stature, validates the seriousness of one's commitment. Uh, it means that you've achieved a certain visibility, you've arrived, so to speak, and that your work is considered by curators and others that make decisions to be worth sharing with a broad audience. Um, museums, I think, have a, a very complex task in this community, you know, and I think particularly of the Academy of Arts and the Contemporary Museum with distinctive overlapping missions, but very much involved in bringing the community into or within their walls. 
and I think that museums, in my mind, really complement what commercial galleries do. But there are also galleries who don't, or which don't uh, necessarily depend a lot on sales or don't expect a lot of sales, but they're there to provide a forum and arena for, for vision. Uh, and that's an important function too, I think. The name of our company is Ortigo Design and Gallery, where our claim to fame is the first advertising and graphic design agency, as well as a art gallery. The sad thing is that a lot of galleries that currently were in Chinatown when I had moved here a year ago, I thought there was approximately about six different galleries, but now there's only Peggy Hopper, myself, and Ramsey Gallery, and I know there's another one, Charlie Valarosa, who opened up Boom. Um, and all the other ones closed. I was right next door, and I always dreamed of having an old building. I don't know why, but you know, I always dreamed of having an old building. It's like your own space, you know, your own world. And um, so when the little space next door came up for rent, it was the next best thing to having your own. And I really didn't know how, my how well my business was going to go. I just started doing prints. And, um, but the rent was very low. And uh, I just decided it just didn't seem like I was taking a chance. I mean, it just seemed natural. If you just have the basics, like just the shape, then if you have that, then you, the inside can be, you know, whatever you want it to be. I mean, the front was all boarded up with uh, concrete block and plywood, and, and you never would have dreamed that, um, you know, that there was anything much behind it, and there really wasn't. But you know how some things just ring true to you? You just know you're doing the right thing, and I've just learned to follow my instincts. The next venture is going to be to add a third floor, and that's going to be a place where I can work. Then I'll see, you know, maybe I'll decide to come and spend some time down here and actually live down here for a while and see what that's like. <laughs> even if they don't, even if it doesn't materialize into some wonder, like, you know, some beautiful renovation downtown with a lot of people coming down here, I just feel good about being a part of, of downtown Chinatown. Artists, by nature, are visionaries. Those galleries who were involved in it strictly for money have faded away. Uh, some are artist owned and operated, and in those cases, artists tend not to be as motivated by money, I've found, and they still survive. I've been in the Hotel Street downtown area for almost 13 years, um, started back in 83, and noticed a lot of uh, emerging galleries starting on Bethel and Luluanu, um, namely Ramsey, Peggy Hopper, Art Space, and a lot of galleries came and went in the boom years of um, the late 80s, I guess. Uh, a lot of restaurants came and went also, and I kind of like observed this whole evolution, and when there were lack of venues to um, exhibit, I decided to sort of take the uh, responsibility of turning my studio into a showcase for artists that otherwise couldn't exhibit anywhere else. And there's not a whole lot of alternative spaces in Honolulu that do the type of uh, exhibitions that we do, which is more postmodern contemporary works. Most of the galleries now downtown are run by artists. And it's more as a need rather than um, a bottom line issue. I think a lot of artists still need to exhibit their work regardless if they're making sales or not or really making money off their artwork. The more galleries that open downtown, the better, I think. Um, it'll educate the public and get the sophistication level of, of the arts a lot on a higher level. Part of the reason for having a gallery district and having a theater district is to bring together uh, people of like mind who appreciate the art and culture of a region. And I think Chinatown, having had at one time 12 galleries in the not too distant past, will uh, become that district once again.
If anything, Chinatown has an innate ability to deal with change. But what distinguishes the area is a deeply held connection with its past. It is what gives Chinatown its unique character, and many feel will be the key to its success and survival in the future. The Hawaii Theater has been a landmark in Honolulu's Chinatown since it opened its doors in September of 1922. An architectural and cultural gem. The Hawaii was as fine a theater as could be found anywhere in the country. For decades, the Hawaii Theater was a cornerstone of the cultural life of the city place for Hawaii's finest performers and entertainment. It was the place to be, and the place to be seen. But slowly over the years, the Hawaii theater fell into inactivity and eventually disappeared. What was once a monument to our highest cultural aspirations ultimately fell silent. In 1985, an effort was begun to restore the Hawaii Theater. It was the beginning of what would be a 10-year odyssey that would transform a rundown old movie theater back to being the pride of the Pacific. The Hawaii Theater is a wonderful example of how you can preserve the past. What we're doing now is we're completing the physical construction on the interior. Uh, the carpeting will go in, the seats will go in, and then uh, we'll have to spend the time making sure all the equipment inside works. And then we're planning for a marvelous opening in May of 1996. Uh, renovation and restoration of these theaters is happening all over the mainland. Um, you see there were thousands and thousands of movie theaters built during the 20s and early 30s because that was America's, you know, most ideal form of entertainment at that time. There was radio and there were movies. Almost every city, village, uh, little town has its movie theater that's now become a venue for the performing arts. It's so important for people in a community to have remembrances of their childhood. And I hear on a daily basis when I'm out of the house from people who grew up going to the Hawaii Theater, their memories, their, the movies they saw, even vaudeville. These are important cultural points of reference. And now they're going to have a chance to take their grandchildren into this grand white glove theater to see what it was like in the old days. This is a scale, a three-quarter inch scale mock-up of the original uh, curtain that we took from a photos that, that the uh, foundation had here. And uh, what we've done is to recreate it would be to redesign all the stencils and all the patterns in our studio um, using um, the photos and working from a scale off architectural features in the theater. We work for this company that has been doing this, this theaters and church restoration for over 100 years. So there's a lot of tricks of the trade that get passed down through the craftsmen. It's hard to find uh, even a lot of this stuff taught in their trade anymore. So they are kind of the last of, of the craftsmen. The Lionel Walden mural was removed 
and uh, shipped back on a roll back to the mainland. And then we uh, set it up in our studio and we had reference photographs of the old, the left hand side, which I understand years ago had, had fallen down and was discarded by a, a janitor on site. Through some way, I don't know how I could be so blessed, I found this man in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He agreed to go through his slides. He found a colored one to replicate the colors that were here originally. And it was good that we had the original mural in Wisconsin for the fact that we could also analyze the color and the scale and the what's most important as well is the style of the painting of the artist who created the original. The reason I got involved was because I could see the potential for a magnificent performing arts center and its ability to serve a very wide uh, cross-section of the population, to be able to serve the uh, local arts groups, to be able to serve national performing groups to come in uh, to provide wonderful experiences uh, for the audiences on Oahu to come and see uh, glorious shows in a first-rate facility. I think when someone walks into the Hawaii Theater for the first time, they're absolutely amazed. And they're amazed that there's a facility like this in Honolulu. And I think it's that surprise, but it's also the potential for the use and the many uses that you can see the more you come in here. On September 16, 1995, the curtain rose again at the Hawaii Theater to celebrate the near completion of the interior of the theater. It was a black tie gala and fundraiser that brought together many of the people responsible for the restoration project. The gala offered an occasion to view the renovation and a rare opportunity for one last look at the theater before the final seats were installed. Although nearly obsessive attention was given to historical restoration, the Hawaii Theater is not intended to be a museum piece. It is a state-of-the-art performance facility a fact that was well demonstrated by the performers of the Castle Performing Arts Center under the direction of Ron Bright. focus has been on restoring and renovating the theater uh, with very high standards. We can preserve that and yet make it useful and viable uh, in the future and provide much needed performance space, uh, a cultural attraction for the tourists, and I think very importantly a sense of pride uh, for the people who say, I remember the Hawaii Theater. It's part of my experience. When the Hawaii Theater opens, you know, it'll, it'll just uh, encourage other people to, to come down here, and um, that's going to help a lot. With a lot of places dying out on the outskirts of the city, like Kaka'ako and um, this is Kalihi, I thought downtown was the last frontier, so to speak, of uh, the original um, cultural hub of, of Honolulu. I think it's an important part of the city. I, for one, think the old and the new go nicely together and that we need both. Downtown Honolulu is a paradox. The more things change, the more things seem to stay the same. Some institutions are torn down to build a new. Some are restored, and others are reinvented. But what remains constant and true, and is perhaps the heart of the city, is the resilience of its citizens. The people and cultures, the hopes and dreams, the old and new, that is the milieu of downtown Honolulu.
Spectrum Hawaii has been funded in part by the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts and by the people of Chevron, celebrating a century of service to Hawaii.